لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين وعلى اله واصحابه وازواجه وذرياته اجمعين اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاتقوا الله واصلحوا ذات بينكم واطيعوا الله ورسوله ان كنتم مؤمنين انما المؤمنون الذين اذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم واذا تليت عليهم اياته زادتهم ايمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاه ومما رزقناهم ينفقون اولئك هم المؤمنون حقا اولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفره ورزق كريم صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم you know we live in a world where a lot of time we see fake things we see false things we see illusions nowadays you know you can buy these beautiful plastic flowers from donnell mall from wherever and they look real more real than the real the only problem is when you touch them their softness isn't like the real flowers and when you put them to your nose they have no smell like the real rose and similarly in you know, those of you who've been to Wollaton Park there's a very big uh, natural history museum where they've got a tiger they've got a lion even and they've got hundreds of birds and all kinds of animals but they are stuffed you know the taxidermist has done a great job in preserving these otters and these sparrows and these tigers and if a 2 year old boy was to push the tiger the tiger would fall flat So there is the real and then then there is something that looks like it it acts it pretends Morona Rumi gives an example of this he talks about a jackal Lumri that fell into a a dying fat you know this is the dyer you know the person who used to color clothes and the jackal fell into this dying fat and when it came out it had all kinds of beautiful colors and in the sun it shimmered it looked like a peacock green turquoise blue what oh, beautiful colors it had and the jackal began to think i am a peacock so when it went back to its own family of jackals it said to all of them you should all stand up and greet me i am a peacock you know you should honor me i am so great and so beautiful now and they said can you dance like a peacock can you sing like a peacock of course it could have it was a jackal rumi from this derives this idea that you know there is the real thing and then there is the <coughs> fake there is the reality the truth the hakika and then there is the pretentious okay. and something like that is also mentioned in the quran when allah says in surah ali imran ya ayyuhal ladina amanu amin believers believe believers what does that mean ya allah if they are believers already why do you want them to believe ah they are believers only by name they are believers like the jackal and eh? they are believers 
like that tiger in Wollaton, they are believers like those flowers from Dunel you can buy, those roses you can buy. Do you see that? Ya yuhal ladina amanu. Aminu. Believers believe. But your belief is not true. You really haven't got your belief right yet. One day, Haris ibn Malik, one of the disciples, known for his piety, and brother of Anas ibn Malik, came to the Prophet and said, Rasulullah asked him, كيف أصبحت يا حارس؟ How do you spend your morning, Haris? And Haris said, Ya Rasulullah, I, as a true believer, that is how I spent my morning. And the Prophet said, Haris, be careful what you are saying. Be careful what you are saying. Everything has a reality. What is the reality of your faith? In other words, prove to me that you were really a moment. Eh? And he says, Ya Rasulullah, I have abandoned the world. My night is spent in the vigil, in prayer. During the day I fast. Ya Rasulullah, let me tell you something else. In my dreams, I see Allah on the throne. And sometimes I see the people of paradise strolling in paradise. And sometimes I hear the screams of the people of heaven. That was a real faith to them. My dear brothers, the Quran also talks about this idea of the real faith and the fake faith. The pretender's faith. And we need to be asking ourselves, where do we stand? Is our faith the faith of true believers? Or is it like that of the monafics? And it's very interesting, these verses that I read to you from Surah Al-Anfal come right at the beginning of the Surah, which talks about the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr, again, was a watershed between the true believers and the monafics, the pretenders, the hypocrites, those fake, false believers. Allah says, Be aware and mindful of Allah. And Make sure that your affairs are straight amongst yourselves. Wa Obey Allah and His Messenger. Obey Allah and His Atiullah. And then it goes on to mention that Innamal Mu'minun al-Ladina Ida Sufir Allah Wajilat Ulu Bohum Wa Ida Tuliat Alehi Mayatum Zadatum Imana. Allah says that when the real believers are those, when the verses of the when the verses of the Quran are read, wajilat What happens? Their hearts tremble. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, in wajilat when Allah is mentioned, their hearts tremble. And when the verses of the Quran are read, Zadatun Imana. Their iman flourishes, their iman thrives, their iman becomes even stronger, increases there. No? So here we have the idea of the iman increasing with certain things. Okay? Uh, although Imam uh, Abu Hanifa doesn't believe in this idea of the iman increasing, but what it really means when it says iman doesn't increase, what he's really talking about is the nafse iman, not the nafse iman means very simply, the Iman that brings you out of state of kufr. That is the same for everybody. So everybody, whether he is a practitioner of deen or not, as soon as he believes, he comes out of that, and that is nafsa Iman. That is equal for everybody. But the degrees and the ranks of Iman, Imam Abu Nifa is not denying that yet. So when he talks about that the Iman doesn't increase or decrease, what he's talking about is this Iman that brings you out of the state of kuf, that is safe for everybody, okay? It doesn't matter whether you are a, a ghost or you're an ordinary person. In that state, you are a believer, okay? But when, when you, when, in terms of the strength of your Iman that gives you that fear of Allah, that gives you the energy and the oomph to carry on doing righteousness, that is something else. That, of course, has darajat, yeah, no? So here the Quran is talking about that these believers, these real believers, 
What happens to them when Allah is mentioned? Their heart trembles. That is, you know, um, the Quran is here really giving you some ways of measuring your own fear. Each one of us, you know. And we need to ask this question. That when Allah is mentioned to me, or something of Allah is mentioned to me, do I feel anything? Am I touched? Am I moved? If not, I need to question myself. My dear brothers, Iman and Islam is not about just outward declaration. It isn't just rituals. Really, it is about your relationship with Allah. So every day, you know, we should ask, just like Rasulullah asks Haris ibn Anas, uh, Haris ibn Malik about his faith. You know, we should ask this question every day to ourselves and see whether our faith is really there or not. And then the Quran goes on to say, Zadatum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun And they put their trust in Allah. Meaning that they really believe that Allah is the one who can change them. Allah is their Lord. They are dependent on Allah. Allah is the one who is going to reward them. And Allah is their true owner. Allah is their true king, master. Okay? Yatawakkalun, you know, they have trust in Allah. They really believe in the reliability of what Allah says, in the truthfulness of what Allah says, okay? And then the Quran goes on to describe how they display their faith and also their tawakkul, their trust in Allah. How do they display that there? Now, the Quran goes on to say that what these believers do is They establish their prayers. They pray regularly, okay? Prayer is biggest sign of your faith okay and the five daily prayers are really a very clear mark of a true believer without this you are not the true believer at all Diana. so five daily prayers and then and the sustenance and the provisions that we have provided them they spend joyously they spend generously from them from that Diana. and then the quran gives these, these are the true believers. Just listen to that. These are the, these are the real believers. These are the real believers. You know. So as though he's saying, there are also those who are fake believers. There are those who pretend. And then the story of Badr begins in the next verse, and it's very interesting. You know, as though the Quran is contrasting, you know, these true believers with those who are pretending to believers. Well, you know, the final sort of conclusion. For me, from this, uh, this set of verses, is that, you know, our faith has to be expressed outwardly through our worship, through our charity, and through actions, really. That is the only way we can show that we are true believers. We cannot, we should never hide our faith, you know. The hiding and, 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 and concealing of the faith is a sign of hypocrisy, really. And so we have to declare our faith. And the other point, you know, this, these set of verses make very clearly is this notion of there being the real faith. I could give you many examples, perhaps inshallah on another occasion, you know, the example of Hazrat Abu Talha giving away his garden. Hazrat Hubeir, when he was uh, on the, uh, when he was being hanged, and Suhaib Rumi, when he was leaving Makkah, and how he was willing to leave everything, but still carry on with his migration. Anyway, these are wonderful stories of what is a real faith, and what is a faith that is just of pretension. Fake faith, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the iman e haqiqi, you know, the strong, real, true faith, and, pro and, and protect us from pretension and from hypocrisy. Wa akhir da'wana, and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin.